Breaking news from Starbase, Texas. The countdown for Starship Flight 7 has begun, but questions are swirling around SpaceX's ambitious January 10th target date. While the team races against time at Starbase, another giant is preparing to make history on the opposite coast. Blue Origin has officially announced their launch window for New Glenn's maiden flight, and it just might overlap with Starship's schedule. The stage is set for what could be a historic moment in spaceflight. Two of the world's most powerful rockets, both ready to prove themselves in the same launch window. But there's a plot twist. Recent developments at both launch sites suggest we might be in for some unexpected turns. At Starbase, Ship 33 sits ready but separate from its booster, while in Florida, New Glenn stands tall on Launch Complex 36, its Blue Ring payload now integrated. Meanwhile, a surprising leadership shakeup at Sierra Space adds another layer of intrigue to this already complex story. This is Elon Musk 24 Hours, bringing you the latest developments that could reshape the future of space exploration. Let's dive right in. The atmosphere at Starbase is electric tonight. As we stand here in the shadow of the orbital launch mount, the questions on everyone's minds are growing louder by the hour. SpaceX's target date of January 10th for Flight 7 looms closer, but the usual signs of an imminent launch are conspicuously absent. No live stream schedule, no official confirmation, just the constant hum of preparation and possibility. Let's break down what we're seeing on the ground. Ship 33, our next generation spacecraft, completed its static fire test with flying colors, a crucial milestone that brought us one step closer to launch. But here's where things get interesting. SpaceX has already installed the flight termination system on S-33, a significant deviation from their usual procedure. Typically, this system isn't installed until after stacking the ship onto its super heavy booster. This change in sequence could signal either a brilliant optimization of the launch preparation process or a hint at potential complications ahead. Inside the massive high bay, another story is unfolding. The payload bay of S-33 still awaits its cargo, a batch of simulated Starlink satellites that will test deployment mechanisms in space. Recent images from inside the Star Factory confirm these test satellites exist, but their journey from factory floor to spacecraft remains ahead of us. SpaceX faces a critical decision. Install the payload before transport and risk damage during movement, or delay installation until after integration testing potentially extending the timeline. Meanwhile, activity around Booster 14 has raised eyebrows among close observers. The recent removal of its hot staging ring, a revolutionary component designed to increase payload capacity, has sparked intense speculation. Are we witnessing routine checks of the grid fins crucial for booster recovery? Or has SpaceX identified issues with the hot staging mechanism that require immediate attention? The presence of a Grove crane near the pad adds another layer of mystery to these operations. But perhaps the most telling sign comes from Cameron County itself, complete silence on road closures. These closures are mandatory for any significant movement or testing operations, and their absence speaks volumes. Even if S-33 makes its way to the pad tomorrow, the intricate dance of stacking ship and booster won't happen immediately. Both components must be perfectly ready and the weather must cooperate. Speaking of weather, Mother Nature seems determined to add her own drama to this story. Current forecasts paint a challenging picture. Strong winds and rain threaten not just the launch itself, but the critical pre-launch operations and post-launch recovery efforts. SpaceX's recovery vessels need clear visibility and calm seas to perform their vital roles in this mission. Yet all hope isn't lost. The FAA's recent advisory reveals a launch window extending from January 10th to January 16th. This flexibility could prove crucial, allowing SpaceX to navigate around weather challenges and complete any remaining technical preparations. Some speculate a launch on January 13th would carry special significance, exactly three months after Flight 5's groundbreaking achievements. But while all eyes are on Starbase, another space giant is preparing to make history 1,500 miles away at Cape Canaveral. Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket stands proudly on Launch Complex 36, its massive form reaching toward the same stars it aims to conquer. The company's recent announcement on X, formerly Twitter, 
set the space community buzzing. They're targeting the same January 10th launch date. Dave Limp, Blue Origin's CEO, shared a striking image of the Blue Ring payload being integrated at their factory, accompanied by three crucial updates that sent shockwaves through the industry. Integration complete, successful dry run operations, and most importantly, launch license secured. The three-hour launch window opens at 1 a.m. Eastern, marking what could be the dawn of a new era in commercial spaceflight. The timing is almost poetic. Two of the most powerful rockets ever built, both reaching for their respective milestones on the same day. But beneath this surface-level drama lies a deeper story of technological evolution and commercial space competition. New Glenn's first flight isn't just a test, it's a National Security Space Launch certification flight, carrying implications far beyond mere commercial interests. Jared Jones, Blue Origin's senior vice president, captured the gravity of the moment perfectly. No amount of ground testing or mission simulations can replace flying this rocket. His words echo the philosophy that has driven the space industry since its inception. At some point, you have to fly. But just as this unprecedented space race reaches its crescendo, another story breaks that could reshape the industry's landscape. Tom Weiss, CEO of Sierra Space, has suddenly stepped down. The company's press release calls it a retirement, effective December 31, 2024. But seasoned industry journalist Eric Berger suggests there might be more to this story, reporting tips that Weiss's departure wasn't entirely voluntary. This leadership shakeup at Sierra Space comes at a crucial moment. The company's Dream Chaser space plane and Life Habitat module represent key pieces of humanity's future in space. With Fadi Osman, chairman of Sierra Space's board and CEO of parent company Sierra Nevada Corporation, taking the helm during this transition, questions abound about the company's future direction. The timing of these three simultaneous developments, Starship's next launch, New Glenn's debut and Sierra Space's leadership change speaks to the revolutionary moment we're witnessing in space exploration. The old guard is changing, new players are emerging, and the pace of innovation continues to accelerate. As we stand on this precipice of history, the stakes couldn't be higher. Success for either Starship or New Glenn would reshape our understanding of what's possible in space launch technology. Success for both would signal the dawn of a new era in space exploration, where multiple super heavy lift vehicles compete to carry humanity's dreams to the stars. The next few days will write themselves into space history one way or another. Whether we'll see both giants take flight, which will fly first, and how these launches will impact the future of space exploration, these questions keep space enthusiasts around the world glued to their screens, waiting for answers. The coming days will mark a pivotal moment in spaceflight history. Whether Starship Flight 7 launches first or New Glenn beats it to the punch, we're witnessing the birth of a new space age. Two titans of industry, pushing the boundaries of what's possible, each bringing their own vision of humanity's future among the stars. As these events unfold, your voice matters more than ever. Drop a comment below with your predictions. Which rocket will fly first? What challenges do you think they'll face? Your insights help build our community's collective understanding of this historic moment. Don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on notifications. You won't want to miss our minute-by-minute -minute coverage of these launches. Share this video with fellow space enthusiasts who need to know about these groundbreaking developments. This is Elon Musk 24 Hours, bringing you the future as it happens. Until next time, keep your eyes on the stars. In a development that's raising eyebrows across the aerospace industry, Chinese firm Cosmo Leap has completed testing of their own version of SpaceX's Mechazilla catching system. Following SpaceX's groundbreaking achievement last October, this Chinese counterpart bears striking similarities to the original design, from the tower structure to the distinctive chopsticks mechanism. Fresh reports confirm Cosmo Leap's static testing completion with the company claiming their data aligns perfectly with simulations. But as industry experts examine the details, questions arise about the true capabilities of this replica system. 
Meanwhile, the space race intensifies as NASA faces critical decisions about its Mars sample return mission, while SpaceX continues pushing boundaries with its proven Starship program. From space innovation to strategic implications, we're covering it all. I'm with Elon Musk 24 hours. Let's dive right in. The SpaceX Mechazilla system stands as a testament to American innovation, a towering achievement that's revolutionizing space launch technology. But just months after SpaceX demonstrated its groundbreaking catch attempt, concerning developments are emerging from the East. Let's break down what makes this situation so significant. When SpaceX unveiled their Mechazilla system, it wasn't just another launch tower. This was engineering brilliance in action. Massive mechanical arms designed to catch a 230-foot rocket booster, weighing thousands of tons, all with the precision of a surgeon. Each component was meticulously designed, tested, and refined through countless iterations. The static load tests alone involve supporting 500 tons. Imagine the weight of three fully loaded Boeing 747 suspended in midair. Now, enter Cosmo Leap, also known as Dehong Ue Chan. Their recent announcement on Chinese social media platform Weibo revealed something that's causing quite a stir in the aerospace community. Their testing facility bears an uncanny resemblance to SpaceX's Mechazilla, from the tower structure to the distinctive chopstick arms. But here's where it gets interesting. Their system appears significantly smaller, less robust, and notably different in key technical aspects. During their static testing phase, Cosmo Leap employed a method strikingly similar to SpaceX's early development process. They suspended cylindrical metal blocks from their chopstick arms, mimicking the load tests SpaceX conducted in early 2022. But industry experts quickly noticed crucial differences. The structural integrity, the control mechanisms, even the basic cable systems seemed to be missing or underdeveloped. The internet's reaction was swift and merciless. Comments flooded in, ranging from skeptical to outright dismissive. One user pointed out, the tower doesn't even have proper control mechanisms. It's just a basic steel structure. Another questioned, who are they trying to fool? This looks like a high school engineering project compared to SpaceX's system. But perhaps the most telling response came from NASA Administrator Jared Eisman. His statement cut to the heart of the matter. Starship's rapid reusability and orbital refilling represent a revolutionary leap in space capabilities. The high ground has always mattered. Military value, economic potential, and civilization-changing discoveries. We can't ignore it, and neither can China. Despite the criticism, Cosmo Leap seems undeterred. They've secured $14 million in funding, a figure that seems almost quaint compared to SpaceX's investments in their launch facilities. Their ambitious timeline targets 2026 for their first launch but aerospace experts remain skeptical. The technological gap isn't just about hardware, it's about the years of experience, the countless failed attempts, and the innovative spirit that drives true progress. Meanwhile, SpaceX continues pushing boundaries at an unprecedented pace. The company's preparations for Flight 7 showcase the real complexity behind these systems. They're not just replacing lifting pins and reinforcing communication systems, they're continuously evolving their technology. The orbital launch mount undergoes regular strengthening, protective walls are fortified, and each vehicle faces rigorous testing protocols that would make most engineering teams blanch. But here's where the story takes an interesting turn. While China grapples with their replica tower, SpaceX is already looking ahead to catching Starship itself, potentially as early as Flight 8 this year. It's a goal that seemed impossible just months ago, yet SpaceX's track record of turning science fiction into reality gives credence to their ambitions. The contrasts become even starker when examining China's broader approach. Their launch facilities, often constructed near residential areas, raise serious safety concerns. Their LEAP or UAN rocket, while incorporating elements from both Starship and Falcon 9, reveals a fundamental misunderstanding of rocket design principles. It's not just about copying features, it's about creating a cohesive system where each component works in harmony with the others. Speaking of harmony, SpaceX's expansion plans paint a picture of calculated growth. The tank farm system is being enlarged to meet increasing demands. New vehicles are taking shape. S-34 complete, S-35 sections spotted, 
B-15 through B-17 in various stages of development, it's a symphony of engineering and logistics that's targeting an astounding 400 flights by 2025. This brings us to a crucial point about innovation versus imitation. While Cosmo Leap's efforts might produce a structure that looks similar to Mechazilla, they're missing the fundamental philosophy that drives SpaceX's success. It's not just about building a tower that can catch rockets. It's about creating a sustainable, efficient system that revolutionizes space access. The implications extend beyond just commercial competition. NASA's Mars Sample Return Program faces its own challenges, with costs ballooning from $3 billion to $11 billion and timelines stretching to 2040. China's announcement of their plans to return Mars samples by 2028 adds another layer of urgency to this space race. But herein lies the opportunity. SpaceX's Starship program 